Weber cruise coming up and as much as I am so excited to be going on this cruise ship, I admit that there is one cruise port that I'm really not looking forward to. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're watching this video, we probably know each other just a little bit already. Every once in a while, I do these sort of Q&A videos where I do answer some viewer questions. And at the same time, I am going to be sharing with you what our upcoming cruises. I am actually very excited. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention two things. Firstly, happy new year. I hope that 2023 had a lot of amazing opportunities for you to travel, for you to cruise, for you to enjoy spending time with friends or family, and just a lot of good things happening in your life. And even more than that, I hope that 2024 is going to bring amazing things. And as always, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Now I did ask viewers for some different questions. I got quite a lot of good ones, but in this video, I have narrowed it down to 12 questions that I'm going to answer including what is, in my view, the cruise port that I consider to be perhaps the worst cruise port in the Caribbean. I know that's a little bit of a controversial question. It's also very subjective, I know, but I am going to answer that and share our upcoming cruise. Now, for those that don't know, I am in Florida before our cruise for a couple of weeks, so please bear with me. I am in my hotel room right now. Question number one, how many cruises do I take each year. Now, every year is a little bit different. However, in 2023, we've taken the most cruises that we've done in one year. We took seven cruises. I realize that I'm very lucky. We actually felt very busy this year. So this is probably about the maximum that I even want to do because I do have things going on at home and I'm a little bit of a homebody actually a lot of the time it might surprise people, but I do like to have a little bit of a balance, but we definitely feel very lucky and I feel very, very happy. And I did enjoy each of our seven cruises that we took this year. Now, do I always take a balcony cabin? No, I don't always take a balcony cabin. In the past, I have taken inside cabins and I've also taken ocean view cabins a couple of times, but this year we have taken only balcony cabins in part because we are working a little bit while we're on a cruise and it does make things easier to be able to film with the light from the balcony or even to be able to step out onto the balcony and to be able to video and things like that. But I actually don't have anything against inside cabins or ocean view cabins. And if I was looking to cruise a little bit more on a budget, which is something that we did over the years quite a lot, especially as our kids were young, I would have no problem staying in an interior cabin. As we enter the new year, where do I see the best cruise deals? Well, Cruise Line alone, as I've been looking, I see that MSC has, at least on the surface, a lot of the most competitive pricing out there. We're actually going to be going on an MSC cruise in 2024, so I'll be able to share with you what I think both the good and the bad, but I definitely think that there are some good deals out there for MSC, but all of the different cruise lines do have different deals depending on when you are able to cruise. I still think it's a really good idea to work with a travel agent that specializes in cruises because they can really help you to find the best deal. In particular, if you are booking early, oftentimes that is when you are going to find the best deals. By the way, if you have some tips and tricks on how to find the best cruise deals, especially in 2024, please let us know down in the comments below. What are my hotel recommendations for hotels near the Fort Lauderdale cruise port? We have a couple of favorite hotels for going in a couple of days early. Those are the Hilton Fort Lauderdale Marina. That is right on the intercoastal. So I just think that that is an amazing location. I like the way it really feels like a resort, even if you stay right there and you can actually take the water taxi into Fort Lauderdale or even just take the water taxi and see some of those beautiful homes. And otherwise on the beach, we stayed at the W. That was really a lot of fun along with their rooms. They do include a few nice amenities, including some activities on the beach 
and bicycle rentals for free. So we found that to be a really enjoyable hotel, so beautiful and a great location. Now I know I did get some questions about hotels in Miami. Unfortunately, we haven't cruised that much out of Miami. So I haven't really stayed at a hotel there. If you do have hotel recommendations in Miami, please let us know down in the comments below. That will definitely help some other people. Okay, shifting gears now to Alaska cruises. What do I think is the best Alaska cruise, at least in terms of itinerary, for a first time cruiser? So I think that a seven day inside passage is your best bet. It's going to be the easiest in terms of arranging transportation and flights. Now you could leave from Seattle or you could leave from Vancouver, Canada. I have a preference for Vancouver, Canada. The reason for that is I think Vancouver is such a beautiful city to visit. Now, I do have a little bit of a warning. The embarkation port Canada Place can be hectic to get on to the cruise ship. That is because you are actually going to go through customs and it is going to take a little bit of time similar to when you do get on an airplane if you know that in advance just relax through it give yourself a good hour and a half two hours to actually get on board that cruise ship but once you're on it's going to be great now your itinerary is likely going to include juno skagway and ketchikan all amazing cities and a stop at one of the glaciers so it could be glacier bay it could be hubbard glacier and I don't think that you'll be disappointed. Now I had a fun question and it was, how do I avoid kids on a cruise? Well, apparently a viewer did book a carnival cruise during the month of December. And she said she was surprised to think that people would actually take their children out of school to go on a cruise in sort of mid December and not during the holidays. Well, that definitely does happen especially nowadays. So I think if you are going on a cruise in early January or anytime after the 10th or so of December, you can definitely run into a lot of kids on Carnival cruises, on Royal Caribbean cruises. So any of those cruise ships that are going to have a lot of bells and whistles and fun things for families and kids to do. So how do you avoid kids on a cruise? Well, an obvious answer is to actually book a cruise line that is adults only like Virgin. But if you don't want to do that, just pick a cruise ship that doesn't have all of those bells and whistles. So one of the older cruise ships from Carnival, from Royal Caribbean, from Norwegian Cruise Lines, oftentimes those are going to be a really good value and you're not going to have many kids on the cruise ship. Which brings me to my next question. Would I ever consider living on a cruise ship? Now, as much as I think that this sounds like the dream, I don't think that I could see myself doing this, although you never know in a few years. But what about a world cruise? Now, that definitely is very interesting. I don't think right now, but maybe in five years, that definitely seems really exciting to be able to go to so many different destinations. Now, have you heard of the Royal Caribbean ultimate world cruise. I just started to hear about this recently and somebody who's actually a viewer of our channel reached out to me. She is on the Royal Caribbean ultimate world cruise. This is 274 days on the serenade of the seas. This is 150 plus destinations, more than 60 countries, just incredible. So Leah, and her husband are on board this cruise ship. They are a couple that is kind of a Gen X couple. I think they're definitely worth following. She actually gave Life While Cruised a really nice shout out in an article saying that Life While Cruised and Royal Caribbean blog really helped her out with planning and getting ready for her cruise. Now you might be wondering how much does a cruise like this cost? Now Leah says that for an interior cabin, the starting price was about $60,000 us and for a balcony cabin which is ultimately what they chose it was about eighty thousand dollars now i am going to leave all of leah's information up here on the screen so that you can follow her if you like on tiktok and on youtube now i'm going to share what caribbean cruise port i like best and what caribbean cruise port i like least that was a question coming up soon but i'll share that a little closer to the end of the video because it does relate to the cruise that we are going on now moving on to solo cruisers how can solo cruisers get the best deal well luckily for solo cruisers there are now a few cruise lines that are actually having more solo cabins than they did in the past or completely new solo cabins that didn't even exist in the past so norwegian cruise line is definitely the leader 
in singles and solo cabins. They've actually added 1,000 solo cabins. So definitely take a look at Norwegian Cruise Line. And a tip still is really book early because there aren't that many solo cabins. So you do want to snag those as early as possible. But other cruise lines are also putting some solo cabins on their cruise ships. Now, another tip besides just a solo cabin is to look at interior cabins and especially at a cruise that is maybe not at the high season. It is going to be less expensive, even if you do have to pay double occupancy, that is going to be cheaper. And if you really want a higher cabin, you could book inside and then you can bid for an upgrade. And if you're not on a sold out sailing, there's a greater chance that you're going to get it. What excursion did we enjoy most on our recent Panama Canal cruise? Now I do still have that video coming out soon about our Panama Canal cruise review on Holland America, but our excursion that we liked best actually surprised us a lot. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much, but it was in Montego Bay. We did a bamboo river rafting excursion. It was calm, it was quiet, it was beautiful. I definitely recommend this excursion 100%. So what is my favorite Caribbean cruise port and what is the Caribbean cruise port that I might choose to stay on the cruise ship and actually not get off. So the worst cruise port. So let's start off with the positive. What is my favorite Caribbean cruise port? One of my favorites is St. Martin. I absolutely love it there. Now there are other cruise ports that I also like. One of them is Cozumel. I know it's a surprise to some. Some people don't like it there. We just always have a good time. Another one that I really like is Curacao and St. Lucia. I just think it's one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been, but I've only been once, so I do really want to return. But the cruise port that I could go again and again and again, and I just absolutely love it, is St. Martin. I do have a video on my channel about it. I just think it's so easy to go and visit on your own or do an excursion that you will love. I could never tire of St. Martin. By the way, if you've been on a Caribbean cruise before, please let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite Caribbean cruise port that you could go to again and again? Okay, so what is my least favorite Caribbean cruise port of call? And of course, this is very subjective, so please don't hate me. But, well, I have more than one, but one of them is actually Costa Maya. Now, I did enjoy on our last cruise when we were in Costa Maya, we did do an excursion to the ruins. It was the Chachaben ruins. I definitely enjoyed that. And I do think that that is something, if you wanna do it, that is definitely worth it. But in terms of just getting off the cruise ship and walking around in the cruise port itself, I just don't enjoy it that much. There's a big pool in the middle. It's very crowded. It feels a little bit like a tourist trap to me. And I would just rather, if I'm gonna to go to a pool, and hang around, I'd rather do it on the cruise ship where it's nice and quiet. Now, we're not actually going to Costa Maya on our upcoming cruise, but we are going to a cruise port of call that a lot of people might say you should stay on the cruise ship. So what is our upcoming cruise? I'm really excited. It actually is one of our favorite cruise lines. So it is on Celebrity Ascent, so Celebrity's newest cruise ship. Now, last year we were on Celebrity Beyond. We definitely thought it was one of the most beautiful cruise ships that we were ever on. Uh, we thought a lot of things were absolutely amazing on that cruise ship, but we did have a few things that we didn't like as much. So we'll see on the Celebrity Ascent what we think of it. This is going to be a cruise where both of my two boys are going to be with us. So we try to do sort of one annual cruise that is more like a family vacation. We work a little bit less on these family cruises. I am really looking forward to it. Now our itinerary on Celebrity Ascent is Nassau, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. As I mentioned, I do really enjoy Cozumel. I expect that we're going to have a good time. Grand Cayman is one cruise port that I used to really love, but because it is a tender port, I've started to just not enjoy the tendering process as much but my understanding is it's done really well on celebrity ascent because of the magic carpet so we'll see how that goes and there is nasa now i know for many people nasa is just not a favorite cruise port but i do have an excursion planned it is to i think it's called baja 
Mar. So it's next to Atlantis. So I'll let you know, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook and you'll see a little bit of our excursions. And of course I will share them in an upcoming video. Now our upcoming cruise on Celebrity Ascent is on January 7th. If you are sailing on the same date, please do say hello. I'm always happy to stop, say hello and chat for a few minutes. And as well, please let me know if you're not going to be on that cruise, but you're thinking about going on Celebrity Ascent in the future, or you have any questions at all, please do let me know in the comments below because that will help me when I am making my content and my video later on. No matter what your plans are for 2024, I wish you the very best. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.